Hi everyone, this is Kelly Sparta. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about this disturbing thing that I'm seeing happening on the internet and that I'm hearing about from my clients. And that's the idea that everyone is saying, it's time to step up, it's time to step into your purpose to become who you're meant to be, blah, 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 blah. And there is this huge factor going on with that, with people talking about it ad nauseum and people are getting freaked out. So many people are getting freaked out. They're like, oh my God, I'm not ready to step into my power. I'm not ready to step into my fullness of my, myself. I'm not ready to step into my purpose. I don't even know what my purpose is. How am I supposed to step into it? Oh my God, okay. Let me just say, these people are wrong, okay? They're wrong. It is now time to step up. It is time to contemplate. We are in a forced hermitage. We are being forced to get still, to get quiet, to be with ourselves, to be present to what is. This is not a time to go out and do. This is a time to be. That's what this is all about. This is the quiet time for contemplation and commitment prior to stepping forward into the world again once we leave our hermitage. So long as we are sitting here, this is time for contemplation. Now, that's step, that's, that's issue number one. Issue number two is that it is not mandatory. Okay, there's so many people who are at least receiving these messages as being mandatory. They are not, it, it's not mandatory. There's nothing in your life that is mandatory. You are at choice for absolutely everything, whether you've made a contract or not, you can always cancel the contract if you choose to. You are at choice. So if you choose not to step into the process of initiation, into the process of contemplation, into the process of becoming, you don't have to. Nobody says you have to. Nobody's going to stand over your head. Nobody's going to smack the back of your hands with a ruler if you don't do it. Okay? You are entirely at choice. If you choose to engage in this process today, there will be other opportunities in the future if you don't, but if you do, then here is an invitation for you about how you might engage it, okay? When you go looking for what your purpose is in life, the first thing you have to remember is that your life's purpose is the fullest expression of your authentic self. If you don't know who you are, you will never find your purpose. That's how that works. You have to know who you are to find People I work with who come from challenged childhoods, knowing who we are is a real, real challenge, right? So one of the things that you can do, and this is a process I did myself about 20 years ago, you can sit down and contemplate your life. Just do a life review, right? Go back and look over your life and see what the themes are that emerge from your life as you look back. So I'll give you an example. When I did this for myself, and if you can hear that, there's a bus beeping in the background, I apologize. <laughs> when I did this for myself, what happened was I looked back and I said, okay, what are the themes? I moved a lot because my mother was military and then I married a man who was military and we were just moving all the time. I've moved 38 times in my life, okay? So when you consider that, that's a massive amount of change, right? A lot of moving. And then I looked at it and I said, okay, so I worked as a real estate agent for a long time and I, I trained real estate agents and I did a lot of stuff around real estate. And what I realized was that's a lot of change too, right? You're dealing with people who are dealing with massive transformations in their lives because usually real estate transactions are also associated with weddings and divorces and job changes and births and deaths and all that other stuff. So a lot of transformation. When you take those things together and I added in the fact that some of my yearbook signatures from high school look a lot like my client testimonials today. Uh, I, I realized that there were a lot of people in my life who were going through their own transformations that would just show up 
and I would happen to be there when they when they needed it. I did a lot of healing work with uh, boyfriends and friends and just people I met randomly on the street. You know, I'd, I'd have these significant moments where their lives would change in an instant because I just happened to say the thing that triggered it, right? And when I looked at that, and then I looked at the fact that I had a social group of people who would, people would come in and they'd be like super engaged with me and super excited to be around me. And then they'd suddenly disappear from my life. And they'd be gone for months, even years sometimes. And then they'd come back and be super engaged again, right? And I took this very personally for a long time until I figured out what was going on. And so I, I had all of these breadcrumbs to follow, right? I had I had these breadcrumbs about what I was doing, where you know how things happened, and you know um, you know when I worked at a job in in college, um, the person who owned the company who had hired me uh, and I became her second in command, she she was getting a divorce, she was going through a breakdown over, you know, she had an early version of Prozac that completely screwed her up. Um, and there was just all this huge up, upheaval. And I was trying to provide sort of a foundation of solidity throughout that as her second in command. And so, you know, there were lots and lots and lots, right? And I had to look at all those pieces and go, what's the common thread? And the common thread became, ah, I carry the energy of change. I, when I show up, the energy of change comes with me and people's lives change if they're ready for it. And I went, okay, so that makes sense. That explains why people get really involved with me and then go away and stay away and then come back because they can only take so much change in their life at once. Okay, I get it now. All right, so what this enabled me to do was to say, okay, if I am the energy of change, if I carry that, if that's part of my identity, then I'm gonna choose to be the eye of the storm instead of the storm itself. And that way I could create some much needed stability in my life. And I did, you know, from that time forward, I was able to live in places for much longer. <laughs> I was able to have more stable relationships and, you know, things like that. So uh, that was super helpful. <laughs> and I was able to put boundaries in place and say, okay, so um, clearly I am impacting people around me socially. So I'm only going to choose to engage this energy in a business context, and then I could have stable social relationships. And that actually worked, okay? And so that was super helpful. And then I was able to say, oh, and I carry the energy of change. So if people work with me, it's because they're ready. And if, it's, if they don't, it's because they're not. And so I could stop taking it personally if somebody decided not to hire me. I was like, oh, right. They either need me or they don't right now. Okay, great. And so all of these things became much easier when I understood my true nature. And I was able to step into a place in my business where I could more clearly articulate what it was that I did. Fantastic, right? This is what stepping into your purpose is about. So if you're going to go through this process, this is how I would invite you to do it. Just take a look at what your life has looked like. What has been the common thread? For you, it may not be change. You know, I mean, that's, it was a big, ugly one for me. It was like, wow, everywhere, right? Yours might be something completely different. In fact, it probably will be something completely different. But if you look at your life, it will give you evidence. And if you stay out of the details and go up into the broader context, the broader strokes of what is happening within each of those contexts, you'll begin to see the pattern. And that pattern will tell you who you are in the moments when you are being yourself without artifice, without, you know, trying to do somebody else. So really thirsty today, not sure why. Anyway, so, this is my invitation to you. This is your time of hermitage. This is your time of going within. Take your time, sit with it, ask yourself the question, look at your life. And then when you've determined what that is, don't feel the need to go out and immediately like burst into the scene. 
I mean, it, it has been 20 years since I had that thought process and I am just now coming into my own. You don't have to do it all at once. You know, I, I've had a process of evolution. 10 years ago, I was looking at a friend of mine because my guys were giving me the message, just be who you are. And somehow in my head, that meant be Amachi, uh, the hugging saint. And I was like, I'm not Amachi. How can I be Amachi? And it's like, that was not the message, but that's what I was hearing. So sometimes we don't even hear it, right? The message was be who you are. And I didn't have any idea who that was, right? I, I still didn't get it. I was still stuck in the idea that I had to be somebody else. And so it's a process. You don't have to get it all at once. You'll get there. It may take a while. It's okay. If you want to get there faster, I can help. You know, I, that's fine. <laughs> but you don't have to, right? You can just take your own sweet time and be okay with it. But if you want to get there yesterday, I can absolutely help you get there yesterday. Well, I can help you get there in, in a little bit <laughs> rather than, than, you know, a long while. But, um, you know, this, just stop freaking out. It's okay. That's all I'm trying to tell you. It's okay. You do not have to freak out. I will talk to you next time. I hope you're well. I hope you're safe. Blessings.